Hey everyone, it's your girl, Maddie here, aka Beaver Mosh. And today, I'm here to talk to you about In Memoriam Tenebrae from the Brazilian based project Mordrian. And it's coming off a Dominance of Darkness Records. And on this debut full length, this one woman project unleashes a very compelling recipe of intensely occultic and traditionalist black metal. If you want that haunting, dark, grim, and foundational approach to the genre, this is a great way to get that fixed. This thing is raw and icy and full of meditative atmosphere and heavy sawing riffs. And it's easy to try an album like this and have it come across as rather hackneyed and generic, but this is quite the opposite. I was immediately drawn and impressed by the attention to just the writing that Mordrian pours into this album. We start off with The Cave and on this introductory track with these dark ritualistic pictures and these bleak occultic scents that really work and help to conjure up this sense of dark magic and i love these spoken word sort of incantations that really set the mood and the thematic tone of the record and this all leads us into the delight of the black art where we are introduced to Mordrian's raw, poisonous croak sitting over these winding and haunting licks. There's definitely an emphasis on this dark, distressing mood, but while also bringing in some somber and mournful melody into the fray. The drumming is interestingly meditative in the way that it's mixed. It's really there for presence. It's not too hot in the mix, but enough to add an effect. It kind of leans into minimalism and is used to add this sort of swinging ritualistic dance to what is already a very hypnotic atmosphere. On the occult path into forgotten wisdom, the clean guitar parts are just as penetrating as the more distorted heavy metal part. It really forces you to focus in and, and chew on them. And these buzzing riffs are just so haunting paired with these blistering but strategically repetitive drum parts. There are these dense, winding guitar harmonies that just knock me into a nightmarish daze. I, I love it. There is this subtle, melodic undertone over all of this that isn't overdone, but utilizing just a perfect amount to instill this despondent beauty. Anti-Cosmos feels like this defiant blasphemous shout at the heavens. It's such a fury to experience. And these cascading, racing tremolos that we get, it's electrifying in its pure, raw majesty. The vocals even possess a bit of melody within them, even with their grim, rugged, and purposely grating delivery. We also get this open, more symphonic lead section with these kind of whispered vocals and humming bass line. It's, it's spellbinding to say the least. O Canto dos Corvos features these swelling guitars, these skipping drums that work in tandem with these wide Sith that just kind of wrap over you and won't let go with its frigid grasp. Mordrian kind of screeches this track with a real grandeur in her voice. It's, this doesn't make sense, but it's, it's 
ugly, but it's gorgeous at the same time. Mordrian does something that's really well demonstrated here that also she does show off on the entire record in the way she's able to take more open and quieter more mysterious sections and still make them feel very cutting and sinister and i really enjoy how that is executed here on solitude 52 z thick sawing guitars make way for these gorgeous humming synths and these circling leads. This track feels like it's constricting to a very focused point and it's arresting the effect that that has. It, it's as if you're being swept into and trapped into this other realm that Mordrian is opening up for you. The music on this record is raw, it's bleak, it's evil as all fuck, and at times, however, it does feel rather epic and played that way with a particular subtlety, and that's super well demonstrated here at the end of the track with this rising, climactic tremolo that feels like the most fully realized communion that you can experience on black metal and i get goosebumps every time the title track presents this deeply felt and moving riff that reverberates with so much intensity it kind of does this methodical spinning thing it really rings out in the most hypnotic way possible and also there are these kind of half sung half chanted vocals that really add an interesting sort of layering to the cut on Lycanspash Mordrian somewhat flexes her diversity and flexibility as a black metal artist and gives us something far more punishing and fast and aggressive it's a track built around this hammering fiercely rummaging riff that has such a backbone to it the drumming is just so maniacal and i really didn't expect that especially as the album sort of embraced a more minimalist and sparse approach to this point but that just makes this drumming moment feel more effective and as a climax to the record on Immorium Tenebrae by Mordrian the atmosphere is intoxicating the riffs are fantastically delivered the vocals are very compelling and there is just this supremely dark mood working all over it that she just makes sound easy to produce even though it very much isn't there is a lot of emotion baked into these tracks it's performed at such a deep personal level and i can feel that as i listen listen to this album with headphones on turn the lights off light a candle do whatever you got to do to get in the mood because this one is worth the attention and hey those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed this review, hit the like button. I mean the world to me if, if you consider subscribing. I have a Twitter you can follow. I got a link to that in the bio of this YouTube channel, which is at Beavermosh. We have a comment. I love getting to engage with those. And hey, keep it metal. My name is Maddie, aka Beavermosh, and I'm signing off.